Bienvenidos, señoras y señores, to the Bleed Lows Podcast. This episode of the Bleed Lows Podcast is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, events, and they're the first to market odds and lines. So you can find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, the NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, even golf. Look, Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information, from live in game betting, props, and futures. Head to Bet Online today and use your mobile device to join to, and make sure you make your first sports bet. Use the, our promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V 50, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. And stopping by the Canasada for a few minutes, uh, current Los Angeles Dodger slash Sportsnet LA uh, uh, play-by-play guy for the Los Angeles Dodgers, Joe Davis. Joe, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Alonzo. How are you doing? Doing good. Thanks for uh, for stopping by. So uh, not to uh, throw too much pressure on you right out the gate, but I just the first thing I want to ask you is you are re- you are replacing Joe Buck, the, the, the voice of my youth on Fox mm-hmm. uh, for, for all that stuff. You and I are actually pretty close in age, which is also insane. How does that feel? You know what? It's yeah. So same thing for me. Part of the reason why it's such a cool promotion for me is because of what you said. Like Joe's been the guy for all the big events through our lifetime that has been the voice calling those moments. And the guy that I, as I decided I wanted to do this for a living, he was calling all the biggest games I was watching. And I thought that's a guy I would love to be a little bit like. And he's turned into a mentor for me as well and a friend. And that's a, a big part. Same way, guys, as as following Vin, that defines the Dodger chair. It's the same thing going into this Fox gig. A big part of why it's special is because of who I'm following. Well, and, and obviously we, we just lost Vin uh, not, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And I know everyone's uh, dealing through that, but as, as you, you know, obviously when someone passes away, you, you kind of have a time to reflect, right. And, and you look back on stuff. You talked about it on, on the broadcast, but, but I wanted to ask you, you know, you know, for our audience that may have not caught that, what did Vin mean to you? And what does he still mean? Because that guy's still always going to be around, you know, kind of like a Bob Shepard is with the Yankees, right? You yeah. hear that voice from time to time. So, so what, what, what does that kind of mean for you as you kind of look back on all that? Yeah, greatest ever to do the job, and there's never going to be anybody like him. He will always be the greatest ever to do the job. He will always be the voice of the Dodgers and, to me, the voice of baseball. You know, Vin, before Joe Buck, there was Vin doing the World Series and doing all the big national games, and not just the World Series, but NFL playoff games and the Masters and and you name it. There was Vin, and I, I think that he's the greatest storyteller the business has ever seen. I think you could argue he's as good of a storyteller as there is in any industry in our lifetimes. So, I I mean, uh, again, from a personal standpoint, it's that the chair that I sit in is defined by him, and it will always be the case. And I think bigger picture, it's just the legacy that he leaves as the greatest ever to do this job. I think that's a great, concise way of putting it, the greatest storyteller probably ever i mean it's there's a lot of really good storytellers out there but vin had a story for just about everything right and it's it's wild just you know like we were talking about it earlier uh the story that you told about evan phillips's wife misplacing her her sweater uh you know you 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 know i know you made a point to say that you didn't want to emulate a lot of the stuff that vin did but as you know calling a baseball game there's a lot of dead time so the fact that you know you're able to to more or less kind of give that homage in a certain degree uh, is the perfect, concise way. Thank you. Yeah, and it wasn't that I didn't want to emulate Vin because I I do. He's the greatest ever to do the job, so of course I want to emulate him. I just – it's a fine line between that and trying to be him. So I realized that the storytelling is a big part of what made him him, and that's the expectation Dodger fans have. That's that's the announcer they've had for the entire time the team's been in L.A., and I go and I listen. I recognize, yeah, this is it's it's rich when you hear the stories. And when I listen back to myself, not that I'm any good at it, but I think just human condition is that we want to hear stories. So my ears perk up when I critique myself and I hear myself telling a story. So that's a long way of saying 
because Vin established that as the expectation, and from there, because I learned that it is a real thing, that the human condition is to want to hear stories about people, I've really worked hard to make it a continuation of what Vin did and a part of what we do still and um, have done my best to become better at telling those stories. Yeah, absolutely. And I, before uh, we, we continue the historical component, because I know Alicia is going to, is, is foaming at the mouth to ask that question. I wanted to ask you this because Juan, my, my counterpart Juan here, talks a lot about guys that are in his fight club, announcers, color guys, stuff like that. Yeah. You as a guy that obviously, you know, you're, you're, you're the guy with the Dodgers or you, you do football, you do college football. You know, now you're going to do MLB on Fox. When you hear of, of, of people like on Twitter, whatever, as, and as you know, it's despair of pain, Twitter. But, the, you know, the people speak, right? You hear, yeah. hey, Joe Buck is in my fight club. Hey, Bob Costas is in my fight club. Hey, so-and-so is in my fight club. Does that ever get to you in, in any way, or does it kind of make you, you know, as you said, kind of go back, revisit some stuff, and, and, and work on stuff? I've done a lot better job, Alonzo, as my career has gone on, of not letting social media determine how I feel about a broadcast. And that works both ways. People are really nice to me on there, really. Like, I, I don't want to say that it's just a, it's a mess on there. People are great. Dodger fans have been amazing. At the same time, though, say you get 20 tweets, 19 of them are nice, one of them's mean. There's two things. One of them is you're going to focus on the mean one. I think we all do that. But the 19 good ones, I shouldn't need those to know if I was good on a given night. I don't need those. I don't need that positive feedback any more than I need the negative feedback. I know when I'm good. I know when I stink. So I've done a much better job of not hanging out on there and not letting it define the way that I feel about games. And I think it's, I think it has its place. I think it can be a good tool, but I just don't know that it's great for the soul always. And I think especially for play-by-play -play announcers, like on the short list of jobs where you shouldn't be spending a lot of time on social media probably is play-by-play -play announcers. So I, I've, <laughs> cleansed, I've cleansed a little bit getting off there for the most part. No, hey, 100% right. And uh, and Alicia, go ahead since I know you're foaming and chomping at the bit to no, ask the question. No, what? What? No. <laughs> Joe, thank you. That was wonderful advice, especially for maybe young and upcoming broadcasters, journalists. I was told that when I got into the business, it was some of the best advice. Don't take to heart the negative. Don't take it personally. Don't focus on it. But that also goes both ways. You said it yourself. You can't also focus on the positive, all of that. You can appreciate it, right? Kind words are kind, but you should not use social media as your uh, measuring stick of your really? performance, right? So thank you for everyone listening out there currently in school or whatnot <laughs> pursuing it because this is yeah. Joe Davis giving you that advice. And um, we are the Bleed Lows podcast. We are the only Latinos talking Dodgers uh, baseball and LA and culture. Now you spoke so eloquently. I also saw the way you are, I viewed when you were speaking about Van on Spectrum. It's just so important and so beautiful that we go through this together, losing Vin. Mm -hmm. But you also get to work in the same press box, the same stadium with Jaime Jarin, who is a friend of the Carne Asada. He's been on our show. He's a wonderful man, such a gentleman. Um, any stories, any tidbits, any any kind of insight, what it's like to, I mean, you're there with Fernando and Jaime Jarin. Good Lord. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. No, he is. And you guys know, knowing Jaime, as special as he is as an announcer and as much as he's meant to Los Angeles and to the Dodgers, he's he exceeds all those things, just how he is as a person. And one of my highlights each day at the park is when I get to bump into Jaime and say hello. And he comes into our booth pretty much every night and just says hi to everybody. And um, I cherish those moments. And, and right from the start of my time with the Dodgers, which is now – this is my seventh year, but my first year right away, he took him took me under his wing and made sure that I was comfortable and um, made me feel like family immediately. So, yeah, he's, he's a very special, special person to me. Yeah, and, and it's his last year broadcasting with you all. So even more special, right, when he comes in yeah. and, and visits. And so here on the podcast, we are also um, – Big proponents of Fernando getting his flowers while he's still with us, right? And I'm going to let Juan talk about that 
about the goal. We, we have a petition going. Well, what is our goal? Regarding Our goal is to have his number retired. And look, Joe, I, I don't want to put you in an unfair seat because I know you have nothing to, to do with this. All right. Everyone we've talked to majorly. I mean, Dale Murphy was surprised to hear that Fernando's jersey wasn't retired. Mm -hmm. They don't give out the number. You know, Jaime Harin told us he has had conversations with the Dodgers about this. He wants it done before he he retires, right? He wants to see it live. Unfortunately, we lost Mike Brito this year. I think it would have meant so much for the scout who discovered Valenzuela to see live Valenzuela's jersey getting retired. So I, I, I guess we just want to... I, we don't want to put you on the spot. We just want to hear your thoughts on Valenzuela's jersey getting retired. Yeah, I mean, I don't know you guys know the reasoning behind it is that the rule of thumb for the team is you don't do it unless they're in the Hall of Fame. And that's a whole other discussion, right? Both the team's perspective and Fernando's place in Cooperstown. I, I love that they don't give the number out. I think so. I grew up a Cubs fan. Ron Sano was the Cubs radio announcer, was the color guy for my childhood and Ronnie is in the hall of fame now, but it happened after he passed away. And that always broke my heart knowing that, that, you know, he's, he's got his rightful spot, but he didn't get to appreciate that. So I can totally relate with you where you guys are coming from. If they are ever going to make an exception to it, he would be the guy to do it for. And I, I know Jim Gilliam too is an exception for a different reason, but um, I mean, nobody has meant more to the organization and the way the organization has transformed in its time in Los Angeles than that man. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to segue from one Cy Young Award winner to another one. Uh, you know, you work with Hershiser, yeah. but mm -hmm. not just Hershiser. You work with, you have different partners. And I, I want to give you your flowers because I don't know if our listeners realize how hard it is to work with rotating partners. Now, I know as the season has gone on, you've been able to build chemistry. But right from the beginning, when you're and all these guys have different styles, like Don Trell has a different style. Jessica yeah. has a different style. Eric Carroll has a different style. We've had all those people on the show and they all give you credit for making it work, Joe. How is it that when you're broadcasting with these people, the give and take, most importantly, knowing when to shut up, letting the other person come in and not making it seem awkward? Yeah. I, well, first of all, thank you for passing that along. I think I, it's a priority. It might be at the top of the list. What is your job as a play-by-play -play announcer? It's to make the person next to you shine on television specifically because you can see what's happening. So there's not as much requirement of the play-by-play -play person to describe everything that's happening, right? And let's face it, nobody gives a you-know-what about what I have to say. They want to hear what Eric Karros has to say. They want to hear what Omar Garcia Parra has to say. Well, Hirsch, like, these are the people people care about. So I try to nail the basics, tell some stories, get the facts out, entertain. But like, I understand that these are the people and the former players that – want to that fans want to hear from so i i just do my very best to put them in a spot where they're comfortable and put them in the best position to succeed and like you touched on one everybody's different and so what that requires is completely different for each of them and uh yeah it's it's part of the gig especially this year and one that i embrace and do my very best to make the most of uh, before I, I hand it over to Alonzo to start wrapping up, I, I did want to, I don't know if I misheard this, but I thought I heard Hershiser say that before you guys started working together, you guys were watching old tape of Vin Scully. I, I, is, that, is that true? We never did together. There's never like a formal sit down, but I can tell you that I, as recently as this would have been January, uh, I had a, I was in Michigan doing college basketball and the game got canceled because of COVID outbreak on one of the teams. So I had just a full day in the airport and I spent the day watching old Vin broadcasts, you know, a random regular season game in the mid nineties, uh, a couple really random games, a uh, postseason game that I'd never watched and just taking notes. And you do that much less formally anytime you listen to Vin, I think. And it was a masterclass anytime I'd turn him on. I used to listen to him all the time when I was in the minors, doing uh, Montgomery Biscuit games, we would, you know, in the central time zone, I'd call the game and then game would end. I'd be doing game notes and the 
website and all the stuff, the extra stuff you do as a minor league announcer. But while I was doing the extra stuff after the game, I would listen to Vin because it would be right around when the West Coast games were starting and learn each time. And then 2016, where I'm doing just the road games, he's doing just the home games. I had to keep up with the team closely. So I was watching all those home games and not just keeping up with the team, but learning from Vin. So, yeah, there's definite truth to that. Um, probably a little more, never as formal as it was sitting down, taking notes the way I did this winter, but uh, definite, definitely truth to what Oral said. So there was an active choice by you guys to continue the style, that storytelling style, because as, as Alonso mentioned, the Evan Phillips thing blew up all over social media. I don't know if you saw this, but everyone wanted this to know what happened with the sweater. But yeah, uh, hey, and actually, I think somebody sent me a response from her. You guys probably saw it. Yeah, yeah. Um, they never did find the sweater. Right. The way he's pitching, though, that's that's not going to matter. They can go right. buy a whole box of sweaters too. <laughs> See, but that's the power of your broadcast, Joe, because everybody's like, "What happened to the sweater?" Right. And that's <laughs> kind of like the stuff that would happen. I, I, it's unfair to compare you to Vin. But I, I just want you to know, you are making your own mark. Everybody loves the calls that you're making. And now it's a generation of Dodger fans that are growing up as Joe Davis is my announcer. Yeah, that so, means a lot. Yeah, before I hand it over to Alonzo, because you said you were a Cubs fan, I need to hear your Harry Carey impression. Oh, or, hey, or do you not have one? Yeah. You know what? I, I will uh, I will point you to the Harry Carey hologram we had during the Fox Field of Dreams game during the seventh inning right? last Thursday. I've heard very strong opinions both ways on that. What I can yeah. tell you is a lot of time and thought went into that and the pregame. I don't know if you guys saw the tease before the Field of Dreams game where it like looked like actually Bob Gibson pitching on the Field of Dreams field. It looked like Hank Aaron in the on deck circle. So the production people at Fox put in so many hours to work with a, a third-party company to make those things come to life. That's a complete aside from what you asked. I'm just deflecting, so I don't have to do a hairy <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. For those of us that grew up with the Superstation, WGN, we all know you're a Cub fan and a Bud man. So uh, there you go. go ahead, also, Alonzo. master class by Joe Davis to completely circumvent that. Well done, sir. Thank you. I, I just wanted him to say, hey, look at the guy with the sombrero. I'll bring up Rob Mondesi. Yeah, we we don't need me to do it. We got you. Yeah, we got you. So before we uh, we set former Montgomery Biscuits play by play guy yes. uh, uh, right. Joe uh, Joe Davis uh, on his way because I know you got a bus to catch. I have to ask a very important question. Do you okay. you live in, in in Pasadena? You obviously work at, at the Ravine. Where do you get your? We are all about tacos. We're all about culture. We're all about all things Los Angeles, right? Yeah. Where do you get your tacos, and what is your favorite taco? See this? I'm gonna I'm gonna fail and get kicked off the podcast here. I don't eat a ton of tacos just because I'm like a low carb guy typically. So I do big open face things. We cook a lot at home. One thing we do at home is I'll do. I mean, it's not really a traditional taco, I guess, but we do. We'll marinate chicken and grill the chicken over charcoal always, um, and then oftentimes pair it with tri-tip, which I'll slice thinly and have the beef and the chicken options. We do a lot of the cooking at home. I need to take advantage of the taco culture and the food <laughs> truck culture in LA more because I know that it is one of a kind and it is better than it is anywhere else. So I need some guidance from you guys. And you can do the open face situation without eating a tortilla. So it's no, no one will take offense to it because you could still, you know, go in and, uh, and do the, uh, the open face thing, go to Guisados, which is right down the yeah. hill there. They yep. have fire tacos, Teddy's red tacos. Yeah. A little carby, but fire. Okay. Uh, th those if are two good to, uh, two good options to start with. And if you okay. want an adventure and try carnitas, there's Al Momo, which is just featured on Netflix. So you can watch and learn about where everybody is going to get their tacos. You can also get some at Dodger Stadium. You're, it's true. you're set. <laughs> you're okay. I got no excuses, guys. <laughs> No, Joe's a professional because he avoided the controversial question of which uh, tortilla he prefers because he's a no carb yeah. guy. We we never got his answer on corn or flour. So. But again, probably, probably flour. Is that a wrong answer? No, yes, no. that is a wrong. You picked the wrong answer, Joe, and I'll tell you why. The flour, the flour tortilla is the oppressor's tortilla. So. 
look, this is this has caused the civil war in the Evan Phillips household because his wife is a corn person and Evan is a flower person. Walker <laughs> Bueller said flower and it's no and it's no not competition. Even not it's not even close. No. Well, they, are, they are they're good but i mean the problem the reason why they're the oppressor's tortilla is because the spaniards came and introduced that uh that ingredient before oh, the yeah. indigenous people just yeah. use the and land the arena is so, that's, that's your history lesson right there on tortilla, like Joe. Don't, don't let anybody tell you what to like you're obviously very healthy but i eat both Everyone gets <laughs> This is why Joe says this is why I don't eat carbs. I can avoid conversations like this. And for the record, I do eat carbs. I just don't need pick to, to go lower. Yeah. I mean yeah. I mean listen, at the end of the day, you you you're the fittest person here aside from a yes. little, so exactly. so you yes. it, it works fine. It works yeah, fine. Right. Fair. Well, I well, love Joe, it, Joe. Thank, thank you, you so much for stopping yeah, by. Course. We know you got to catch a bus because you got to call a game or something. It's weird. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but if you're not following him, go follow him on Twitter at Joe Davis. Super easy to find. He he's one of the best in not only you know the the Dodgers world, but in the game as a whole. He's one of the good ones too. Joe Davis, thank you for stopping by. Of hey, course, Joe. guys. Great to visit with you. Yeah, let's do it again soon. Okay, great. Yeah. And big thank you once again to Joe Davis for joining us uh, on the show. I, I know he was up against it, so we appreciate the, the time that he did give us. Uh, Alonzo had to step away. Uh, he's on assignment. So Alicia and I and Babyface, we're going we're gonna to bring it home for the rest of the show here. Alicia, what, what was your impression there uh, of Mr. Joe Davis? Um. Super cool and super professional. Is he not like the consummate, like, you know, I mean, even when he's just chatting it up, he stays, his voice stays level. He's telling a story. Like he's really prepared and professional. I, I felt like I needed to step my game up. <laughs> no, you're, you're absolutely right. Like to me, I'm like, is this casual for you, bro? Yeah. I mean, because it, you, you're coming off pretty formal. And the thing that just, the guy's 34 years old. I know. He's 34 years old. He gets to be the voice of the Dodgers. And who knows for how long? I mean, let me ask you guys this. Do you guys see him? Obviously, 60 years is, is not conceivable but do you see him maybe doing 50 like could you see him staying with the dodgers I mean, because i'm sure he's i mean he's making a lot of money being the the main guy now on the national scene for fox plus he does football how much longer do you guys think joe davis is going to stay with the dodgers uh you the key word that you just said is football right whether you like it or not it dominates this country Yes. There are less games, right? Less traveling. He's got a young family. I'm thinking big picture, and he's only 34. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he doesn't have to stay. At, I'm trying to think. Did we talk about this contract? Does he no, have? No, no we, we didn't. Don't know, right? We're speculating. So, yeah. I don't see him staying much longer. Football's just growing. Baseball's always been catching up to the other major sports. So, I can totally see him leaving, and I wouldn't blame him. I mean, um, do I want him to go? No, but I, the answer is I could totally see him leaving. I don't know if it's now because the Dodgers are in such a great position to dominate, not just this year with the World Series, but for many seasons to come, at least, you know. What do we say, babyface? Should we go like around four or five years? Um, I mean, I'd, I'd love for him to stick around. I mean, and do like me too. <laughs> 30 years, you know, 30 years with the team. But I, I honestly don't think that those are the days that we're in anymore. That guys, uh, somebody's not going to stay with the team 40 years, 50 years as a broadcaster. I mean, that I think was, you know, Van and Jaime and the Bob Eukers. And it, it's, it's a dying breed. I mean, they're, you're not going to get guys that are going to want to stick around in the team, like I said, that long. So, you know, if, if Joe, he said he's been with the team now in his seventh season. So if he's in Wow, his, seven. Man, seven you know, just flies, man. Yeah, so if, he, if he's there seven and, you know, he does another three, four, like Alicia was saying, you know, that's over ten seasons with Joe Davis. I mean, I think that sounds about right. I mean, yeah, I mean, what he's going to be doing, you know, doing the Fox stuff and, 
you know, he's still going to do the All-Star game and the World Series, you know, so he's busy. I mean, he's just busy nonstop. I mean, that he gave us this time, 20 minutes, like, it's like thank you for giving us, I know, you know super putting cool. that aside for us, you know, and, and and we've been trying to do this for a while now. And we finally, he said, yeah, okay, I'll give you, you know, 20 Isn't minutes. That we can cool? do it. That's so cool. So, Joe Davis, friend of the carne asada. Like, I love that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, as, I want to have him as long as because, you know, we, we discussed this on the show yesterday. I mean, there's no one that can replace Vin, but we've been so lucky to get Joe Davis. Because, like, yes. Joe Davis, you know, maybe when he first started, nobody heard of who Joe Davis was. But now everybody knows who Joe Davis is. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's just come in. I mean, he's fit in perfectly after Vin. You know, he even, he has that, that nod to Vin with the stories. You know, he's he's the perfect, you know, not a replacement, but just the perfect next announcer for the Dodgers. You know, and I have to say, I mean, Alicia, I think you're absolutely right in the sense, who doesn't want to work less and make more money? Yes. Because I'm sure Fox... And, and, you know, whoever else he's hired are going to pay him more than Spectrum's paying him. Because yeah. Is he an employee of the Dodgers or an employee of Spectrum? I think he's Spectrum. I so is it Spectrum? I think they're all Spectrum, yeah. And then after a while, I'm sure the travel just gets annoying. And it's exactly what you said, Alicia. I mm -hmm. mean, he, he's got young kids. He, it's going to get to a point where, you know, I don't want to be away from my kids for two weeks. You know, if it's they a, start playing like t-ball and exactly. and doing the organized sports, are you going to want to be traveling with a team or or even just being at the stadium? There are so many games in baseball, right? So we're yeah. grateful, I'm very grateful to our announcers, and we're so spoiled again as Dodger fans to have someone like Joe. But yeah, as the kids get older and and they start playing sports or you know dance recitals and stuff, I mean, wouldn't you? He seems like a very devoted family man too. Yeah, so I, I was trying to factor all of that in. Yeah, I, I, I don't blame him. It. I think we should appreciate it while it lasts. Yes. But you're absolutely right, Babyface, in the sense that he did. It was a rather smooth transition from Vin to Joe Davis. And I say this because I compare it to Paul Sunderland. Do you guys remember Paul Sunderland? For uh, If you guys want to know what a trivia question is, he's the guy who replaced Chick Hearn. Okay? Oh. <laughs> and I didn't think Paul Sunderland did a bad job. I thought Paul Sunderland was great. But he's following Chick Hearn. And Paul Sunderland only got like, I think he got one or maybe two years max. And then they brought in Joel Myers, which I was like, get this guy out of here. I mean, <laughs> hey, I, I have to listen to Joel Myers. And I was just like, and then after the Lakers let him go, he started doing UCLA games. And I'm like, I can't get away from this guy. <laughs> but it's like, for the Dodgers, it, I mean... You, I mean, I know you say it all the time, Alicia. We should probably just make it a T-shirt by now, you know, how spoiled Dodger fans are. <laughs> but, I mean, it's like we went from Vin to, to Joe Davis. And, you know, we hinted at it. I, I find it really cool that he's kind of kept that same style where we hear stories. I think a lot of us are, are used to, when you watch a Dodger game, hearing stories. Have you ever listened to a broadcast of another team? I, I mean, I, I think it's brutal. Like some of I these guys, to. they're like trying out comedy routines and I'm just like, hey, man, just just call the game. Uh, so the fact that, that Joe Davis was able to continue that and he didn't fight it, I, I think that the smartest thing on his part was he knew whether they were fair or not that he was going to get comparisons to Vin. And what he did was he just, I think he honored Vin's legacy by doing it and i mean he's done a wonderful job i, I want to segue into the dodgers have done something different this year and that is they're rotating color analysts uh with joe so on the road uh we have we've had uh jessica mendoza we've had eric Carlos, we've had dontrell willis and we've had nomar and the home games are with oral hershiser of those rotating, first of all, let me ask you guys, what do you think of the rotating color analysts? Who wants to go first? <laughs> yeah, that's for both of you. I mean, any of you can jump in. We're doing a talk show here, guys. So the idea right, is for right. you guys to talk. Um, I, I will say that I like it. I like variety. Well, the irony is, is in most other things, I'm a traditionalist. 
like that's why I was very upset for those years that my father was not allowed to watch Vin in his final years on television because of the deal, right? The TV right. deal. Like I, it burned me. I was pissed at the Dodgers. Um, but I've moved forward. I've let let it go, right? I I actually enjoy, I didn't think I would enjoy it. I will say, speaking of my father, he does not enjoy it. He doesn't <laughs> like the road. He wants consistency. He like I guess I think a lot of people are resistant to change. This is new having this rotation, and so people. I just I gave it a try. I just was open to it, and I've I've not been disappointed. There are some comments by a few of the the rotation, and I won't say whom because I like them all, but. Sometimes I've been caught off guard, like, wait, what? But again, it's just different. It doesn't mean it's worse. So my opinion is if it's working and they're not losing ratings or getting hate mail or anything. I mean, <laughs> plus, you know me, I'm always about representation. We've got Noma. We've got Jessica. Like, that's, those are the two things that I want to see more in Major League Baseball in front of the cameras, on the mics, are the fans that are at your games. And that is women women of color and Nomar is a local guy and he's Chicano. So I'm happy. <laughs> what do you think, baby face? Yeah. And, and all those, all those bring something different to the table. You know, I mean, Dontrell, former player, right? I mean, hilarious. He's just hilarious, right? He's, Fun. He's, yeah. he's just like this funny sidekick, right? Um, you know, Jessica, she comes from softball, but she's down with like, the analytics and the numbers so yeah. she's like that stack that stat nerd right that stack geek, yeah. you know and you know nomar former player as well eric Carroll, and they have their different perspective of you know when they played and just how they they view things so it's like you get all these different perspectives and i think it's it's cool and like we said they all mesh with joe davis you know it's like it's not like none of those guys clash with him they all mesh and you you couldn't even tell that like oh yeah these guys don't work on a regular basis with Joel Davis it's like they just fit right in you know I I will say this um I I think it's gotten to the point where it, it works so well I honestly don't notice it it's right. never been one of those things where I turn on the Dodger game and I'm like ah oh, damn dude Carol's <laughs> is doing the game or oh Jessica's doing it. like no to me it, it I, I get it that it's new, and you, usually a lot of people don't like anything new. Don't mm -hmm. change anything up on it. But for me, it's really seemed like they've been doing this for a long time. Uh, you know, I don't know if either one of you remember this, but remember back in the day where Vin would do three innings, and then they would bring in either Don Drysdale or Ross Porter would do the middle three innings, and then Vin would come back and do seven through nine? Yeah. I'm glad I, I never had a problem with that because that was just that's what I was used to like it was normal to me I'm glad the Dodgers aren't doing that right. because <laughs> I always felt like you know I, I liked Ross Porter I thought Ross Porter was a good uh, you know broadcaster is he going to be Vince Scully no but I didn't have a problem listening to Ross Porter would you like to try some Dodger trivia you know right. I mean he had he had that drawl that he had so I, the fact that these guys get to do a full game, and you guys are right in the sense that they all have different personalities. Mm -hmm. And I have to commend the Spectrum people on that because they obviously did a, a very good job in the sense of, of who they picked. You know, Karos has that Dodger connection. Mm -hmm. After talking to Jessica, I was not aware that she had a Dodger connection, right? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. feel, when you hear her, you you can feel her her passion, her love of the game. And yeah. she's right. She's referred to herself as a nerd. So you, uh, to her, she does give off that energy as she's a little kid and they let her in on the stadium and she gets to do all that stuff. And, and I know when we talked to her, Alicia, you were very like, now girls are going to be able to see Jessica on TV and it's perfectly normal. Yep. that she does this and this is now an option for those little girls like hey i want to go into broadcasting yeah. dontrell is like you are at a party watching a game i mean yeah. he has a lot of flavor he is just like about having a good time i love that he's always holding a baseball in his hand that yeah. to me is like he's a total baseball lifer 
Uh, Nomar, another connection to the Dodgers, and he's just very professional. And, you know, we got to talk about Hershiser. I, 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 we left Hershiser oh, off, right? I love Hershiser. I think everyone, I, I, I don't know. Do you guys think they would have preferred that Hershiser do the, all the games? Or do you think people are fine with, hey, let's, let's hear some new voices. We get to hear Hershiser at home. Alicia? Yeah. Do I think that they prefer he do all the games? Is that yeah. the question? Yeah. I mean, again, it's back to people don't like change. And Oral is so beloved. And he's such a, like, he's that good guy, right? Like, he, 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 even when he, you think he might be saying something negative, it's not. Like, it's his, it's his way of, like, <laughs> being surprised. It's how he delivers it. It's, it's how, how you he deliver it. He's just such a, like, good dude, right? Like, he's Oral Hershiser. But with the legacy of a champion, right? His, his records and all of that stuff. So, yes, I do think that there are probably people. I mean, I saw we saw the Twitter verse go off on some of the announcers, the broadcasters as they were being rotated. It was hateful at times. Yeah. And we did talk to some of them about that and they acknowledged it, but they also know that there's nothing they could do about it. It's Twitter, right? And you just keep doing your job and I think they won people over by being consistently good consistently bringing their own flavor like babyface said they all bring something to the table oral is um you know he missed a lot of the end of last season right wasn't it or was it the playoffs he was absent he was gone am i not you know i i, I don't i don't remember that but i do find it interesting that he has <laughs> that he has now decided to only do home games you know we talked about it with joe davis like how much longer is joe davis going to do this now it makes me wonder how much longer is hershiser going to do this you know like i i'm sh because hershiser i i think he lives he lives outside of california i i don't think he lives in california Wh what were you going like to say alicia so i i don't I, I thought we talked about this, but I, please forgive me. And for our, our loyal uh, <laughs> listeners and followers, if you've heard me talk about this before, but my brain, I'm still hungry. Um, the the theory is... You know we're going to have a drop. We're going to have a drop she, now. Is Alicia hungry? Right? When can you tell on the show when Alicia was getting hungry? She's still hungry from the live. Yeah. I, on <laughs> back on Thursday. Yeah, back on Thursday. You're right. Somebody she, give that girl she, a sandwich. She, Give me a cookie. Okay, so I thought that we talked about how COVID has changed everything, including yeah. the need for more broadcasters. And so I'm not saying that Oral has or has not been vaxxed. I don't want to like set the Goonies and the Loonies crazy. <laughs> this is not a show about discussing vaccination, okay? Um, but for the record, I believe in science. Anyway... I I think that the Dodgers and Spectrum I were forced to hire more people. They just okay. did a really I, good I, job yeah. about it. Is, is that am I? No, that that makes sense. You're you're right. Uh, Anti political. <laughs> no, because you're right. If someone got the the COVID and they were going to be out for ten days, do you? I, and it happened earlier this season when um, Darren Sutton. Uh, Don Sutton's son had to come and call a couple of games for a weekend because there was a breakout. So, I, you know, I never thought about that, Alicia, but you might be I'm right. Pretty sure some, they, 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 there are, uh, the rumor was one or a couple of them were, were not getting vaccinated. And so oh. you, you go to different states or you can't be around like protocol, right? Yeah. Like New York or again, I didn't want to get into the politics of it, but the point is, the need was there. Yeah. I don't think the, that Spectrum and the Dodgers were like, hey, why don't we change things up? I really think that it was uh, the light bulb went on because of the need, but they handled it very well. I, instead of just hiring one other person, they were like, screw it. Let's just bring on like the best people we can get and they're going to rotate. And some were already in house like Nomar, but um yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. I, I'm pretty confident in what I'm, I. I think there were people that did not get vaccinated, or they didn't want an outbreak and be stuck with nobody. You know. So, so now I, I, you made me think of something that I'm not. So, do you think this was just an experiment for one year, 
do you think we're going to see this next year where we're going to have rotating broadcasters or do you think maybe they pick somebody based on the reaction because you're right i feel don trell from the beginning i saw a lot of love for him on twitter yes. and for me it was obvious that don trell was the favorite what you were talking about when i saw it and it made me laugh jessica was getting a lot of hate towards yeah. the beginning of the season and then all of a sudden it got four it, it transformed and the hate turned into hate for Alex Rodriguez, where people were just sitting there going, oh, Jessica was good all along. It was A-Rod. A-Rod right. was the one that made Jessica look bad. So yeah. <laughs> it's just one of those. I thought that was funny because it was just one of those things where it's like, no, it's just, just it's okay to admit that Jessica Mendoza is good at what she does, right. man. And that yeah. you were you were just like wrong. And you just had this unreasonable, illogical dislike towards her. Maybe uh, the, maybe the Dodgers are doing the uh, the Jeopardy thing, where they have all the oh. you know, <laughs> trying them out, and then they'll they'll pick like one or two for you know going forward. Well, no, and that and that's why I was asking you guys. I wonder if they use this season to see, hey, you know what, Dontrell got a really good reaction. What if we make Dontrell the permanent guy? But here's the other thing: Dontrell works for Fox. Dontrell does coverage on the weekends, right? So. I'm sure Don Trell is going to negotiate that in his contract, just like Joe Davis has it in his contract. Hey, on the weekends, I go do national coverage. So you're not going to have him. So maybe you do have to hire, again, multiple people to cover it. I mean, we see it with Tim Neverett. Tim Neverett spells Joe Davis whenever Joe Davis. I mean, the Dodgers have broadcasters now. Jose Mota is a guy that they can also use. I mean, Jose Mota, he can do both English and Spanish. I know. I, I mean, they brought... Did. Exactly. <laughs> they brought Jose Mota to spell Jaime Harid. And I'm sure Jose Mota's role is going to change next year. You know? And so I, I, I find it really interesting. But I also think it, it, of the ones that they've picked, I don't have an issue with any of them. I think they're all, all great. Go ahead, Alicia. Do you think that? So I was a little nervous when when I heard about Carlos being hired, <laughs> and I I now you know I just think he's so cool, he's so friendly, he's so down to earth, he's very approachable. But this is before we interviewed him and met him, and we've been yeah. at events at Dodger Stadium with him. I had the impression that he was kind of gruff, like yeah. a little like abrasive. Yeah. And that's, again, I didn't know him. That was my impression. That's my bad for judging a book by its cover. Um, and he turned out, he turns out to be, you know, he just knows his stuff and he's got the Dodger connection. So I, I'm, I enjoy Eric, but I, I was just, I just remember thinking, I'm admitting that I was like, oh, like it's going to be like rough, you know, kind of yeah. like, like he bag on the, the guys or something, you know, like I didn't know what to expect. Well, but no, it, I, I <laughs> know. I think you're right. Of those, of the rotating, I feel he's probably the most critical. But I do feel that he comes from a point where he's not like trying to embarrass anyone. He oh, yeah. is literally trying to explain it. But I do see those people on Twitter who will be like, oh my, like they know more baseball than Eric Caros, right? Exactly. So they don't want Eric Caros to explain <laughs> baseball to them, man. And it's just like, hey dude, I mean, Eric Caros isn't just playing to you. He's playing to a larger audience. There yeah. are people, believe it or not, that watch Dodger games that aren't super fans, that don't know like, about whip or any of those ridiculous numbers and right. so to them they do learn stuff listening to the broadcast what do you think babyface yeah i mean carol yeah he's probably like you said you know he's a little bit more kind of like hard-nosed baseball like right yeah. like yeah that that's how he played the game this and that's how he explains it and that's it's baseball right so you know out of those guys i mean like nomar too like I think Nomar, we'd see him more in the pregame stuff. So yeah. I think he might just go back to that stuff, you know, kind of, if, you know, maybe he won't do as many games. He just goes back to his pregame stuff. So when you, when I look at the at the, the cast, right, Don Chaw does the Fox stuff. So, like, can he really do, like, a full year of traveling and being on the road and doing all that stuff? And Jessica, too, she has ESPN stuff, too. So it's like yeah. it probably makes sense to do the rotation right if they want to keep those guys 
do the rotation because I don't think there's any of those that could actually work, you know, a full season, you know, traveling with the team because they all have other stuff going on unless they're going to leave what they're currently doing. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it's 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 funny because we have had now Eric Carroll's on the show. We've had Don Trell. We've had Jessica. We've had Joe Davis. We're missing a couple of them. We may, we're still working on it. We still no have ma. some time for the rest no of the ma. season to try to get everyone from oh. the Dodgers broadcast booth. Uh, exactly. Hershiser. I think Hershiser is the white whale that we're chasing after. And you, you, you mentioned Noma. But I, I mean, it's, it's. Wait a second. Uh oh. Valenzuela. That's got to be our. Well, you know what? It's funny yeah. that you mentioned that because we've mainly been focusing on TV. But we had Jose Mota on. Maybe we should have more of the radio guys on. Well, I mean, last season we had Tim Neverett on. Uh, but maybe we should think about maybe Rick Monday or Charlie Steiner or, you know, Valenzuela. Because Valenzuela does, you know, the Spanish broadcast. I mean... There's a lot of times, uh, look, I'll admit it. If I'm not watching the game, if I'm on the road, I listen to the Spanish broadcast on radio, you know, because I get to listen to Harin and then in between innings uh, or, you know, I get, because they do it the old way. Harin does the first three innings. Then Mota comes in with Pepe Iniguez and then, and, and Valenzuela, depending on what the rotation is. And then Harin comes to do the last three innings. So I, it's interesting. We should. I, I, that was one question I didn't get to ask Joe Davis, especially now that everything is more modern. I don't know if he's ever done radio. You know, John Ireland. I know Alicia, you and I. We, we listen to a lot of local sports talk radio. Uh -huh. John Ireland does radio for the Lakers, mm -hmm. and you know he's very very descriptive on on his calls. And there are a lot of times where I feel like. John Ireland is like dumbing it down for people, but it's like I think his approach is not everyone is a basketball fan. If right. you're driving in your car, you want to, you know, you're curious about the Lakers, you're explaining it. So being able to now where Joe Davis is just like, you know, I shut up and I just let the audience, you know, just watch what they're watching, right? There, there's a difference there. I would have, I would have liked to have gotten his his feedback on that. You know what I wanted to ask, and I know we got to wrap up here, but I was recently at an LAFC game, and to all of our viewers and, and um, followers, if you've not been to an LAFC game, it is epic. I highly recommend it, even if you think you don't like soccer. Anyway. Football. Football, football. Alicia. I will not allow you to do that. Uh, yeah. Black and gold. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, football. Anyway, um, they, they had Will Ferrell and John McEnroe as the as the sideline as the play-by-play uh, -play -play guys oh you went and, to that game yes uh, and i just thought how cool is that like you have will ferrell and john McEnroe calling you know an lafc game so i was thinking like who would we like to see celebrity wise calling a dodger game right because i if i'm not watching i'm listening so you I'm know like, what <laughs> that's a really good question <laughs> like is it do you pick a celebrity that you know is a fan and yeah. that actually follows the team? Like, I'm thinking Brian Cranston. I've heard Brian Cranston talk about the Dodgers, and he knows what he's talking about. He's right. not a casual fan. Um, Rob Lowe or, or Palinka, depending on who you think he really is, yeah. you know. Because we've not seen him in the same Yeah, place. we haven't seen them together in the same room. So, but, you know. What about like Mary Hart, right? Like, she's like I, I'm off the Mary Hart train. I I know that people love Mary Hart and the way she does the Kimbrel thing. I, uh, I'll, I I won't disclose that. I I it's, it's improper for me to speak badly, but uh, I'll just say I'm not I'm not a fan how, of Mary Hart. How about our friend Guillermo? I I'd be concerned that Guillermo would be drunk by the time <laughs> the first inning. Uh, I, I think we're still waiting for him to come back to finish the interview, right, Babyface? Yeah, I, for, I forgot to check if we had him today. Yeah. You know, that's a really good question. For the Dodgers, I oh, don't. Uh, Arsenio Hall and George Lopez used to go to a lot of games. Yeah, there's. You know, the, it's funny when you say that, the more I think about it, 
But it's not for the Dodgers. You know who what I'd love to hear call a game? Is uh, Jack Nicholson calling a Lakers game? Oh my gosh! Imagine that's a great call. <laughs> that that to me, I was just thinking because you just clearly associate Jack Nicholson with the Lakers, what right? But I don't know if there is a celebrity like that for the Dodgers. So I I, I probably would have to go Brian Cranston because I've heard Brian Cranston talk about the Dodgers and and he knows his stuff. So I think Brian Cranston would be a guy I would listen to. Do you guys have anybody? We got to get him a, a comedy sidekick, though, or like a color guy, like a Don Trell, because Brian, I, I have not heard him speak of the Dodgers. He seems pretty serious to me. Is he not serious? Like he, You know, he. I think he's friendly with Mason, so he'll go on Mason in Ireland every once in a while. And he, he does have a very good give and take with, with Mason in Ireland. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, the days of celebrity, it so this is the chance to like shake it up, right? Like not have a traditional. So Brian would be a great like lead guy, right? right. He knows baseball. He seems pretty level headed. So we need like a Guillermo or George Lopez or an Arsenio or somebody that's going to be fun. Maybe comment on like what someone's wearing, like Bueller's pants too tight stuff like that like <laughs> have some fun you know <laughs> do you do you have anybody baby face i think i'd like to see like george lopez like i think he'd be good like for for brian cranston you know i think he'd be his color guy i think that'd be pretty interesting that that would be <laughs> are there any other dodger celebrity super fans that we're not yeah. thinking of yeah i'm trying to think who who do we see at the games a you lot know who i don't know? see anymore uh Aly Alyssa milano Oh, she was adorable. I I don't see her anymore either. Right. Yeah, a lot of the people, girl? a lot of people that we'd see before, we don't see that often. Jason Bateman. Yes, you that's know? a that's another one. You're. Right. So but here's my problem. He's witty if, and um, he's the guy from like, the '70s show. Um, Ashton Kutcher. Kutcher, yeah. He. he but here's my thing him. with Jason Bateman, Alicia. Have you ever seen uh, Dodgeball? Yeah. Uh, you know, he plays a color commentator on dodgeball. So <laughs> I would just have that image just buried in my in my face when I'm watching the Dodger <laughs> games of Jason dodgeball. Bateman, you know, <laughs> being I mean, Will, that Will character. Will Ferrell, right? Will Ferrell, Anchorman. You got to get him to come and call dodgeball. Yeah, Will Ferrell. Actually, I think Will Ferrell will probably do it because he does a good Harry Carey impression. I don't know if you've ever seen his Harry Carey I have impression. Seen his Harry, I love Will Ferrell. I mean, like, one of my favorite yeah, Will Ferrell would probably be a... Cranston and Farrell, I think, would probably uh, play really well off of each other. They could be the Joe Davis and Oral Hershiser of celebrity <laughs> broadcasting. I'll, I'll send that email off. Let's, go, may, may let's get Will Farrell on the show and be like, we want to audition you to be a, a celebrity broadcaster. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to wrap things up here. Is there anything else that you guys want to add about Joe Davis or any of the broadcasters that we, we discussed today? No, just grateful we we've got some of the best. You know, when we were t talking about longevity, though, like Hershiser, I think he's somebody that we can see with the team down the road, like you know, ten, you know, till Hershiser's like seventy, eighty years old. He's one. He's one. He's one that I could see doing that. You know, while we were talking about it, I just looked it up. Hershiser's sixty three. So this is the reason why I kept telling you the fact that now. And this is another reason why I feel like these guys aren't going to do it. Like traveling, every time I talk to these guys, they bitch and moan about the traveling. Like the traveling just sucks. And I'm sure that's what Hershiser, Hershiser doesn't want to do that anymore, right? So it just does make me wonder how much longer Hershiser is going to do it. But the good thing is, is we, we have a lot of Dodger people that may get into broadcasting. I mean, you've seen Adrian Gonzalez is doing the post game show. You know, we see him on Spectrum. Would he be, ever be interested? Like, I mean, there's a go ahead, Alicia. Chase Utley. <laughs> there, there we go. And the president of the Chase Utley fan club has finally showed up. Sorry, you I know what though? Out there. I just what saw something the today. I just For those of you playing at home, whenever Alicia mentions Chase Utley, take a drink, take a shot. All right. <laughs> I, might, I might have to kill that dream though today because I thought I saw something that said he's moving to England. Today. Chase Utley's moving to England? Uh, yeah. Are you breaking I, that news? No, I, I could to. get used to the cold, to the dampness. <laughs> <laughs> Let me 
see if I can find it. They have terrible food there. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I can't eat fish and chips every day. <laughs> there you go. It's it's over. So b before we wrap up, uh, Babyface, let me know if you can confirm, and we'll break that news on our Joe Davis episode about Chase Utley moving to to London and breaking Alicia's heart. You know, when we had friend of the carne asada, Ned Coletti on, Ned was in London a lot, right? Yeah. Is this Ned's fault? Is he taking Chase Utley from us? And you know what was funny <laughs> was, was Ned told us that he could find Italian food in London. Like, I know. So, yeah, I, I found it. So, according to the Philadelphia Inquirer, and that's the, the major newspaper says, in Philadelphia. It says, Ch Chase Utley has moved to England to spread the gospel of baseball, and he's already converted. He's, he's all, he's, and he's already converted one Brit. Okay, so that means he's, he's moving there for a job. Right. So, someone is helping, has hired him to publicize baseball in, in London. So I don't know how long Chase Utley is going to be in London. He's there for a job, so... Well, nobody asked me if he could go to London. Jeez. <laughs> so there you have it. That is this week's episode. Once again, if you have not subscribed to the podcast, please subscribe. We have our YouTube channel. If you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, follow us on Twitter. We have a lot of new stuff there that we might be able to break, letting you guys know when we're doing our live episodes and stuff like that. Because you never know who's going to stop by the Carne Asada. So for this week's episode of the Bleed Lows Podcast, which is brought, on, brought to you by Bet Online, where the game starts, for the Princesa of Picolandia, Babyface, <laughs> And Al Alonso, who is out on assignment, I'm Juan. Thank you for listening to the Bleed Lost Podcast. We're out.